hope everyone's having a good day. Uh, today was leg day at the gym, and during ski season, I really like to focus more on my hamstrings during leg day, and the reason for that is uh, skiing is definitely more of a quad dominant sport, and so I figure during leg day, I like to focus more on my glutes and hamstrings, and a big reason for that is oftentimes ACL injury is associated with uh, an imbalance of strength between your quadriceps and your hamstrings, where you are more uh, likely to get injured if you have really strong quadriceps that have weak hamstrings. So I like to be able to offset this risk by doing more uh, hamstring work when I'm at the gym. And so this first exercise I'm doing, well, I don't really need to explain, but it's deadlifts. And people may be wondering why I'm not lifting heavier weight, or you might be thinking, can't I lift more than that? It's not all about how much weight you can lift. And since I'm trying to develop more of that muscular endurance uh, for skiing, uh, when I, this first exercise, uh, was actually a PR for me in terms of time. Uh, uh, about a month ago, I did 135 pounds, 100 reps, and it took me eight and a half minutes. Today, I actually managed to complete 100 reps, and it took me seven minutes, 14 seconds. And how I do it is I do four sets of 15 with minimal recovery, and then I do four sets of 10 also with minimal recovery. And as you see, uh, you can see me that I, uh, as I stand up, I try to really activate that glute muscle and uh, along with that hamstring to make sure I'm getting as much out of that exercise as I can. And another thing I try to do is I try to avoid bouncing, bouncing the weight because I don't want to give myself any advantage uh, during the exercise. And so. I don't think I'm going to film the entire seven minutes that it took me to do this exercise because I figured you guys would probably get bored after a while. But uh, I will uh, cut uh, the video from here and then I will show you like my last couple of sets and you can see that yeah, definitely the fatigue begins to set in. I forgot to mention uh, the weight I had uh, today was 140 pounds. And so I'm pretty happy with uh, being able to complete 100 reps and 7 minutes, 14 seconds. However, it's possible that I probably might have miscount, I always tend to sometimes miscount by one or, t one or two. So it's possible that in the last set, I probably did an extra one or two just to make up for any uh, lost reps I might have done earlier on. But as you can definitely tell, <laughs> I'm, the fatigue has uh, already set in. And you can see I'm checking my phone to see what my time is. And ideally, I'd like to be able to get, uh, be able to complete 100 reps in under five minutes. So I figure I'm making good progress. I mean, I shaved off over a minute uh, from the last time I did this exercise. And I want to be able to work up to a weight uh, for at least 185 pounds. I think that would be a good goal for me to be able to complete 100 reps at 185 pounds in under five minutes. Once again, it's targeting, targeting more of the uh, muscular endurance, uh, figuring uh, most ski races average between a minute and 15 seconds to two and a half minutes. And so yeah, that completes my first exercise of uh, doing deadlifts. And as you see, yeah, definitely feeling at the end there. Alright, uh, this next exercise, uh, I did isolated leg curls. I did four sets of 10 reps each leg, and the weight was 75 pounds uh, both, uh, for each leg. And I prefer to do hamstring curls on a machine where I can actually do each leg independently. I find this definitely helps to develop equal strength in both of your legs and so uh, those machines where you do, uh, do the exercise bilaterally because it's possible that you might use one leg more than the other, especially more of your dominant leg. And so in my case, my right leg is more dominant than my left. So I like to try to definitely utilize uh, machines where you can at least isolate uh, each uh, body part, especially when you're doing a single joint movement. 
And I, I also kind of uh, come, when I'm doing the exercise, I try to lower the weight in a slow, controlled manner. So that way I'm really activating that hamstring muscle on each rep. And so that's a, basically a good way is to come up. I could probably even come up a little more slower, but my big focus is, is on lowering the weight as slow and controlled as po possible. This next exercise is called the bridge, and there are different variations of this exercise. However, my objective was just to go for time, and I managed to hold it for 3 minutes 30 seconds. And the main goal of this exercise is to pretty much maintain the position you see me in here, and while maintaining this position, you want to really make sure that you're activating your glutes and your hamstrings, and you just want, uh, another thing is you want to try to keep your butt from sagging. Now for the remainder of my workout, I decided to focus on uh, some core exercises. And in downhill skiing, uh, having a strong core is definitely important, not only in maintaining proper form, but injury prevention, especially that of the lower back. And this first exercise, as you can see, I'm trying, to see, I'm trying to come up as much as I can or as much as the machine will allow me. And then as I extend, I try to extend as fully as possible. I know it doesn't look like I'm extending out of the way, but ideally you want to try to extend as fully as possible. But at the same time, you want to try to do this exercise as quickly as you can. And when I'm doing my core exercises, I like to focus once again on being able to maintain the exercise anywhere between one minute to two and a half minutes. Once again, the reason for that is uh, most uh, ski races are within that time frame. And so as you can see, uh, I ended up doing, uh, I believe it was 100 or 105 uh, reps, and it took me right around two minutes, 10 seconds, two minutes, 15 seconds. Yeah, definitely I'm starting to feel it on these last reps. You can probably notice I'm slowing down quite a bit. Now, you would think me being an exercise science graduate student, I would know the name of this exercise, but I'm assuming it's called uh, the ab roller. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I ended up doing uh, 30 reps, and the goal here is you, you want to try to extend as far forward as possible. That way you're getting a much more, uh, you're getting much more muscle activation out of your abdominal muscles. Uh, with many of these exercises, you really want to get a uh, full range of motion. Uh, the better the range of motion you get, uh, the more you activate your intended uh, muscle that you're trying to target. Uh, for any given exercise. Alright, this next exercise definitely brings back memories of uh, my days at boot camp and A school in the military. And this exercise is referred to as flutter kicks, because as, as you can see, it looks like you're doing flutter kicks. And the goal here is you want to try to keep your legs as straight as possible. And you can either do it for a number of uh, reps or do it for time. And how they would have us do it in the military was each time we would count like as one, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. That's how we did it in the military. I mean, it, it's really up to you how you want to keep your count. But with me, I, I go for more for time. And also, they also had us keep our head off the ground. It's really your personal preference whether you want to keep your head off the ground or you want to rest your head on the ground. For me, I kind of like the, the added challenge of keeping my head off the ground. Now, as I come to the end of the exercise, I like to hold my legs about 6 to 12 inches off the ground just to get that last good burn in. Well, I decided to do one last abdominal exercise before I wrapped it up for the day. 
I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hope to uh, be able to find some uh, better movie editing software because right now I've been using uh, Windows Movie Maker, which I feel is probably not the best video editing software, as I'm sure my voice probably sounds excessively loud. However, it will have to do for now until I can find some uh, editing software, either through the net or I might have to purchase some. But once again, uh, thanks for watching this video. And for those of you who are new to my channel, uh, stay tuned as I'm documenting my journey to defy age and to compete in World Cup uh, ski racing. Um, my two disciplines I'm going to be focusing on are GS and downhill. Yep, good old downhill ski racing. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.